Alright, I think this is the most confusing part. The units of capacitance. Not because it's a particularly difficult concept, but because of the way symbols get used and reused. So, the equation that we are working with to define the units of capacitance, um, the most convenient equation for us to use, I'll use this color, is this equation, the Q equals CV. Now, if we remember, Q is charge. C, in this case, represents capacitance. You can already see we have some problems. Charge starts with C. Capacitance starts with C. This is going to be tricky. Voltage, however, is V and V throughout. Now the units, and I'll stick with my convention of using square brackets around the units, the units for charge are coulombs, or capital C. And I'm going to also write square brackets around the word coulombs, just to remember that it is a unit symbol and not a quantity per se. Just like length is a quantity and meter is a unit for that quantity. Length can have other units like feet or miles or furlongs or fathoms. So C, the capital C, if you see it as a unit symbol, represents coulombs and it means you're talking about a quantity of charge. And if you're putting the variable in an equation, it means you're going to use the capital Q. Capacitance, however, gets the symbol capital C whenever it goes into an equation. However, the unit of capacitance is capital F for a farad. Named for Michael Faraday, a physicist and mathematician and chemist extraordinaire from the 19th century. He is the only scientist who has the distinction of having two SI units named after him. One is the farad, the unit of capacitance. The other is the Faraday, which is a mole of electric charge, or a mole of electrons specifically. So capacitance in an equation gets the symbol C. Even though capacitance starts with C, the unit we use is a farad, hence I have square bracketed it here, and the symbol for farad is capital F. Voltage is a bit more convenient. Voltage is going to have units of V, or volts. Voltage also gets a bit confusing because we use the word voltage as the quantity of voltage, but we have other synonyms for voltage as well, such as electric potential or potential difference. And a very classical term, electromotive force. The force that can push the charges in a circuit. which often gets symboled as EMF, which is different from electromagnetic field. I know we've run out of symbols. Um, lots of this is for historical reasons, but physicists, electrical engineers, anybody working with these quantities is able to move fluidly between all of them. And understanding the nuance is essential to using them in any meaningful way. Um, I find it's helpful to know a little bit of the history of them because it just reminds us that none of this was figured out all at once. It happened in steps, and so we have little quirks of all those little jumps in understanding still left with us in our symbolism and our unit systems. So the Faraday, or sorry, the Farad, we can define in a different way. So following the equation Q equals CV, we can say C is the same as Q over V. This allows us to define the unit of capacitance, the farad, F, as the unit defined by a coulomb divided by a volt. Furthermore, if you remember from previous readings, a volt can be defined as a joule per coulomb. So continuing the algebra, we have a joule per coulomb. And again, Coulomb is now on the denominator of the denominator, so a farad can be defined as a Coulomb squared per joule. I'm not sure 
there is a physical significance to thinking of it in this way, a coulomb squared per joule, but we typically think of the definition of a farad in this way. So we define a farad based on coulombs and volts. And so it's the ratio of how much charge can be separated at a particular voltage. And that's dependent on the value of the capacitor.